Today, we're talking about rappers who got a bit too inspired by others and got busted. All right, let's talk about Jack Harlow, a hip hop artist who's really been making waves. You know, Jack's from Kentucky and he's super charming with a voice that grabs your attention. He's got loads of fans, especially women. For the past 10 years, Drake's been the big name everyone talks about, but now Jack's in the spotlight too. He's got that same kind of appeal. I got, I got one more. <laughs> like the YOLO song, that Drake yeah. flow is this. You can't just say like, you can't just copy the whole work and just forgot to write out his name. Some folks think Jack's success comes from copying Drake's style, the way he raps and presents himself. The Fader even wrote about this, calling it Drakeification. Anthony Fontano, a music critic, once said Jack's early stuff sounded too much like Drake. But now Jack's finding his own way a bit more. You know, I've looked up to him for years. I think I first met him in 2019 at a party and he just briefly gave me props. And then since then, we just seen each other along the way. I went to Toronto in the fall, did a show. We linked, talked up there. This Drake comparison really hit home when Jack and Drake did a song together, Churchill Downs. It's a cool track on Jack's second album. People really started noticing the similarities then. But while some say Jack's doing great, imitating his hero, others aren't so sure. Logic's been accused of copying other artists like Kanye and J. Cole. But the big talk is about him taking inspiration from Kendrick Lamar. This all started with Logic's song, Everybody's, which people said sounded like Kendrick's all right. Logic didn't get it at first. He wasn't into Kendrick's style or the long songs, but later he really got into it. You know, drop the album back and back and back and back and back and back again. I'm back again and snap again. Logic thinks any similarity to Kendrick's music is just because they're both top notch artists. He's worked with people from Kendrick's team, which might explain some of it. Despite Logic's explanations, people still talk about it. He really knows how to blend in or adapt to different situations. I don't give a where I am or who I'm around, I, I let everybody know that I'm proud to be me, I'm proud to be black, I'm proud to be this, whatever the case. And I've had, you know, I've had white people treat me like you, you, you this and you that. I've heard these things from people and I could have just sat on in with Massa and been like, oh yeah, I'm white. That's all good. Don't worry. Are you kidding me? No. And my blood is the slave and the master. There's even a YouTube video called Logic Stealing from Kendrick Lamar for five minutes straight with over 400,000 views. So early in 2021, Cardi B found herself in a bit of a pickle. A couple of rappers from New Jersey named Mir Fontaine and Mir Pesos claimed that Cardi's hit Up was a bit too similar to their track Stuck, which they dropped in September 2020. The drama kicked off when Mir Pesos tweeted a video showing their song next to Cardi's and boy, the hooks of the two songs did sound quite alike. Both tunes had this line, if it's up, then it's stuck which got everyone talking. But Cardi B wasn't having any of it. She quickly clapped back, showing everyone a video from an Instagram live she did way back on August 7, 2020. In the video, she was already jamming to up. Cardi was like, look, I don't copy stuff and I definitely don't want any legal drama. If I did get inspired by a song, I'd be cool with sharing some cash. But hey, I didn't even know about Mir Fontaine and Mir Pesos' song. Producers, I wanna let y'all know how this shit works. When we we hit up the producers, like, yo, have anybody bought this beat? Have any artists used this beat? Is this beat available? If they say yes, they say yes. Like, it's like, I'm just buying the beat. I'm not a producer and I'm not in the fucking shit doing the beat with them. And on top of that, a lot of these producers put the beats that they the artists haven't bought yet. They put it on YouTube all the time. That's how fucking whoopty and um and King Vaughn, they have the same beat. A lot of producers put the shit on motherfucking YouTube. I didn't got it from YouTube. Niggas motherfucking send me that shit. So it's- Here's a fun fact. The line, if it's up, then it's stuck, is actually pretty common slang. Plus, the way they sing it in both songs, it's similar to this older tune from 2006 by Crime Mob called Nuck If You Buck. So it seems like that line and style aren't exactly unique to either song. Now let's switch gears to Corday. He was this bold, lyrical voice for the new generation when he first hit the scene. They were tired of the older generation's criticism. In his response to J. Cole's 1985, Corday wasn't just following Cole, he was challenging him. But as time went by and Corday's career grew, his music started to sound a lot like Cole's. We're talking about similar worldviews, beats, the works. 
On his debut album, The Lost Boy, there were hints of this, but it became really obvious with his next album from a bird's eye view. People started saying Corday was just mimicking Cole, not yet finding his own unique style. Just wait and see. To get what his style is like, just check out that dance move. So that's be $7,643.09. Ah, them dunks was like four bands? Man, you can take them joints off. That's like an 05 Honda for real. I don't even like mm -mm. Yes, sir. What's my total now? 3,263. That sounds a lot better, Dami. I can take it. Cool. Now, let's talk about J. Cole for a second. Some say he's a bit dull, but from a rapper's perspective, he's pretty amazing. His skills set him apart, even if not every track is a hit. But when you listen to From a Bird's Eye View, it feels like Cole could have been on every track. These songs remind you of Cole's early work. Corday recently admitted he stumbled artistically with From a Bird's Eye View. It's pretty cool he could own up to that. The big question is, can he bounce back and step out of Cole's shadow? Only time will tell. Oh, hit boy. He's, man, uh, again, having an incredible run, like producer of the year and and deserves it as well. So he, he's one of the ones. Are y'all going to do an EP, you think? I don't know. We just got to keep cooking. But literally every time we get in the studio together, we make something like this. What do you say on the record? You ask for one, he give you 10 or some shit Not like call hit boy for beats. I asked for 10 of them. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I need yeah. a This whole drama kicked off when Tentacion, whose real name was Jase Dwayne Ricardo Alfroy, called out Drake for copying his style. The Spark, fans, and Tentacion himself noticed something familiar about Drake's song KMT from his More Life album. They thought it sounded a lot like XXXTentacion's hit Look At Me, which had dropped on SoundCloud back in December 2015 and blew up while XXXTentacion was in jail. Drake hit up a DJ that I fought with. He was like, yo, the nigga Drake, watch your interview. He said he fuck with you. He saying he go call your manager within the next few days. So I'm, I'm, bro, I'm amped up. Drake, yeah. You feel me? Drake a genius. He was supposed to contact one of my managers. So he doesn't do it. Look At Me was XXXTentacion's breakout song. And just as it was getting big, Drake's More Life came out, featuring KMT. People started saying that Drake's flow in KMT was just too similar to XXXTentacion's in Look At Me. This accusation strained the relationship between the two artists. DJ Scheme, a close buddy of XXX Tentacion, even weighed in during an interview. He couldn't believe that Drake hadn't heard of XXX Tentacion, considering the timing and similarities between their songs. He's not a man. I think he's a, a that's a move. Especially when I was in jail facing facing life, bro. You get what I'm saying? If Drake would have came to my, my barn here, you know what I'm saying, that would have made my day. If he if he would have showed that he he's a hospitable person and that he's really in it for the culture, rather than being a f taking my f running off with it and then putting it on his album. Now let's talk about Vince Staples and Valet. This beef started when Vince, known for his unique style, released Bag Bag in 2017. Then a year later, Valet dropped Womp Womp. Vince was quick to notice some striking resemblances between Valet's flow in Womp Womp and his own verse in Bag Bag. Vince took to Twitter to call out Valet, suggesting that not just Valet, but others in the industry were mimicking his flow. But Vince didn't just focus on the negative. He actually expressed his love for Womp Womp and gave a shout out to the Chicago music scene. This incident highlights a bigger trend in rap, where artists often accuse each other of stealing styles and flows. It's a testament to the competitive nature of the industry and the value placed on being original and unique. Valet didn't respond publicly to Vince's accusation. Are you on social media and, and, and all the isms that go on with uh, music or just in our lives today? I tried not to be on yeah. it as much as possible. Of course, that's how you have to market right. your stuff, but I'm not living on it at right. all. Now let's shift gears to Busy Banks and CJ. Their feud is centered around Banks' accusation that CJ copied his musical style in the song Hit Up. Banks vented on Instagram, accusing CJ of stealing his lingo and flow without giving credit. Banks wanted recognition for starting a new wave of drill rap. To prove his point, Banks compared lyrics from his songs to CJ's. For example, Banks has a line saying, can't mess with no girl that's basic, and CJ has something similar in Hit Up. This isn't the first time CJ has faced such accusations. Artists like 22Gs have also called him out for mimicking the style of New York drill artists. 
So I'm like, I'm reading the comments. I'm on live on a regular day. I think I'm shopping or something. I'm in the, I'm in the mall or something. And I just keep reading the comments. I keep seeing the name pop up. I'm like, yo, I'm tired of this already. Like, you know what I'm saying? If if it really came down to it, like we could squabble, you know what I'm saying? Like we could, we could just get it on, you know what I'm saying? Like if it if it's that serious, you know what I'm saying? If there ain't no real beef, I don't know these people, you know what I'm saying? I don't know these guys. So it's like, it's no real street beef. There's not gonna be no shootouts. It's not, it's none of that. It's music, you know what I'm saying? They dissing me on songs, you know, it's music, it's competition, like I said, like. These accusations bring up discussions about CJ's authenticity in the hip hop scene. Some even label him as an industry plant. CJ, for his part, has addressed these criticisms in the past. In an interview with Ebro Darden for Apple Music, he mentioned that he doesn't respond to these accusations, choosing instead to focus on his music and not what's said on the internet. So here's a juicy bit from early 2020. Picture this, Detroit's own TJX6, a rapper known for his cool scam raps and unusual style, suddenly calls out Lil Pump. Why? Well, TJX6 had a hunch. He believed Lil Pump copied his unique style in a new song. And guess what Lil Pump shared this song? Right on Instagram. TJX6 wasn't quiet about it either. He went public demanding credit for his influence. And that's not all. TJX6 even suggested that Lil Pump owed him a collab as a sort of sorry gift. TJX6 had specifics to back his claim. He pointed out how similar Lil Pump's new song was to his own stuff. And guess who backed him up? Kasha Kwan, another Detroit rapper and TJX6's buddy who also threw shade at Lil Pump for the same reason. This drama isn't new in hip hop. It's all about being original and authentic. TJX6's call out brought a spotlight on this ongoing debate in the rap world. When does inspiration cross the line into imitation? Bro, make this shit. Run this shit, bitch. I'm the king of Miami. Stop playing with me. Nigga. Ah! Lil Pump says even Eminem copied him, so he feels like he's been copied by one of the best rappers out there. At least that's what he thinks. Guess who's back? Hey, hey, back again. Man, get the fuck out of here, nigga. I'm the real Slim Shady. You copy my music video, so I don't even know what y'all talking about. Now, let's rewind to 2016. Designer, known for his hit Panda, got some heat from Doughboy, a rapper from Future's Free Bands group. Doughboy, along with Lil Donald, another Free Bands artist, accused Designer of sounding too much like Future. But here's a twist. Doughboy actually liked Panda at first. He heard it in jail and thought it was cool. But when he found out Future wasn't happy about it, Doughboy changed his tune fast. He was like, I'm a Future all the way. His problems are my problems. That is some serious loyalty, right? And it's not just talk. Lil Donald even made a track directly calling out Designer for copying Future. This whole situation shows how much hip hop artists value having their own sound. But Doughboy's story isn't just about beef. He's got a deep connection with Future. In an interview, Doughboy shared how Future and Southside helped him shape his debut album, Oh Really. What the media was talking about, like, like, yeah, he trying to steal designer, he, designer trying to steal Future swag and da 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 da. But you feel me? I ain't know what was really going on with the situation. You feel me? I had to figure out before I knew I was wrong for doing that. The drama began with Soldier Boy accusing Drake of copying his style. It all went down in a fiery interview on The Breakfast Club in 2019. Soldier Boy was convinced that Drake stole his flow and lyrics from his 2000 track What's Happening to Drake's 2010 song Miss Me. And look, how, and look how he yo, crossed, look how he Yo, Meek Mill ain't beef with Chris Brown and was finna box it with Floyd Mayweather. Be, be, be with Drake, the biggest rapper in the world. <laughs> Drake? <laughs> Drake? The nigga that got bitey by Pusha T? The nigga that hiding his kid from the world, but his world hide from the kid? Arby Graham in a wheelchair? Drake? Yes! Y'all niggas better stop playing with me in here. <laughs> Soldier Boy wasn't just throwing accusations. He had specific examples to back his claim. He compared the lyrics from both songs, showing how similar they were. Soldier Boy was passionate, to say the least. He claimed he was the one who taught Drake everything he knows. He wasn't just talking about the songs. Soldier Boy believed he had a huge influence on the current generation of rappers, especially in how they use social media. Go 
Hold on, you taught Drake everything he know. Y'all didn't hear Drake on his first song. Tell me what's really going on. Drizzy Drake back in this thing already. What's that? That's oh, Soldier. Shit. That's oh, my bar. Shit. He copied my oh, whole fucking shit. flow. That kissed me through the phone. He copied my whole fucking flow. Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar. Oh, don't act like shit. I didn't make Drake, nigga. Don't do. This claim became a hot topic, sparking debates among fans and listeners. Everyone was weighing in on whether Soldier Boy's claims were legitimate. Despite the noise, Drake stayed silent and didn't respond. That wraps up our look at rappers who got called out for copy. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more. Who do you think copied the most? Drop your opinion in the comments and let's debate.